So today we're going to take a look at the intersection of segments inside and outside of a circle. So we're going to start with the intersection of segments inside or in the interior of a circle. So in the theorem at the top of the page, we have segment N or chord NQ, which is broken up into segments NP and PQ when it intersects NR. Now, P isn't necessarily a midpoint and they don't bisect each other. The two segments are just intersecting, which breaks them up into these two parts. And the theorem says that MP times PR, so the segments that make up chord MR, when you multiply those two segments, that product is equal to the product of the segments that make up NQ. So the product of the segments of one chord is equivalent to the product of the segments of the other chord. In example number one, find the value of x and the length of each chord. So I have the chord PR, so the product of the segments of that chord, 6 times 4, is equal to the product of the segments of that make up chord ST, so 8 times x. 24 equals 8x, and x is equivalent to 3. The length of each chord, 6 plus 4 is 10, so I know that PR is equivalent to 10. And substituting x for SQ, 3 plus 8 is equal to 11. So ST equals 11. Number 2, we have diameter CD perpendicular to chord AB. If AB is equivalent to 8, the length of AB, and the length of CE is equal to 8, find ED. So C to E is 8, E to D, let's call X. Now AB, the length of AB is equal to 8. Previously within the unit, if we had a diameter perpendicular to a chord, it becomes a bisector. So if AB is 8, A to E is 4, B to E is 4. Now I have the segments of both chords. So the product of the segments of AB, so 4 times 4 equals the product of the segments of CD, 8 times X. 4 times 4 is 16, and 16 divided by 8, X is 2. X was the length of ED, so the length of ED is 2. Now to finish with our theorems for those segments within the interior and exterior of a circle, we're going to take a look at um, our secants, or the length of secants. So we have two secants, E to A and E to C. It says if they share endpoint E, then A to E, that's the whole length, times B to E, that's the outside or the exterior, I call that the external, equals CE which is the whole again, times DE, which is the exterior piece or the external. So whenever I have the intersection of two secants and they share this, uh, an endpoint, it's the whole times the external equals whole times the external. So the length of the whole segment times the piece that's in the exterior then whole times external. When I have a secant and a tangent, it says if secant BE and tangent AB, once again they share an endpoint, then this theorem holds true. It's AB and AB is the tangent, so tangent squared equals BD times BE. So BD is the external, and BE is the whole. So once again, that's equal to whole times external. 
So if I have a secant, I see that whole times it's uh, external. Two secants, whole times external, whole times external. So when it comes to these theorems, I memorize that if I have two secants intersecting outside of a circle, they share the same endpoint, then the theorem is whole times external equals whole times external. When I have a secant and a tangent, it's tangent squared equals whole times external. So on the back, let's see what we have. In number three, find the value of x and the length of each secant segment. So I have two secant segments, and I use in words whole times external equals whole times external. So the whole for RT is 10, so that would be 10 times the external piece 4 equals, and the other secant segment, now the whole here, if part of it's x, is going to be x plus 5, and then the external piece being 5. So whole x plus 5 times 5. So I need to distribute here. We got 40 equal to 5x plus 25. Subtract 25 from 40, you get 15. Divide by 5, and x is 3. To find the length of each secant segment, well, I know that RT, I already found that, was 10. Now substitute, uh, substituting in the 3, 5 plus 3 is going to give me the length of our Q is 8. Number four, find the value of x. We have a tangent and we have a secant. Just to highlight again, a tangent intersects the circle once, where a secant intersects the circle twice. So it's tangent squared equals, for the secant, whole times external. So x squared equals, add 12 and 4, we get a sum of 16. So the whole is 16 times the external piece, 4. x squared equals 64. Take the square root, and x is equal to 8 and negative 8. Since I took the square root, to undo the square, I have two solutions, both the positive and negative. And I'm going to reject the negative 8 as the length of a segment can never be, or will never be, negative. And the last one before we take a look at the construction. Find the value of y. We have a tangent and a secant. So tangent squared equals whole times external. My tangent is 9, so 9 squared. The whole part of being algebraic would be the sum y plus 6 times that external piece of 6. Distribute, I get 81 is equal to 6y plus 36. Subtract the 36. 4y is equivalent to, or 45 is equivalent to 6y. Divide by 6, and y is equal to 7 and a half. Now the construction. So given point B, not on circle A. Let's move this down so we can see it. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller as well so I can work with this a little bit easier. Move this over. So given this circle in a point B, not on a circle, we're going to construct a line that's tangent to circle A through B. So step one, and I'm going to explain the steps as we go is to use a straight edge to draw ray AB. Step number one. Now what we're going to do for step number two is to construct the midpoint of segment AB and labeling the midpoint M. So to construct the midpoint that's the perpendicular bisector construction. So with your compass,
You can always erase if your arcs are too big. Oh, that one wasn't big enough. Get rid of that. I'm going to erase some of these marks. So all I need is the X. Now I'm going to construct the perpendicular bisector. So through these two points, I've just located the midpoint M. And the reason why I want that midpoint is because that midpoint becomes the center of circle M. So we're going to draw circle M. Let's do that in orange. We're going to draw circle M with the radius of either MA or MB, is they're the same. So you can decide. Whoops, I have a mark underneath there I want to get rid of. Extend this out. I'm going to draw a circle M. Now, circle M intersects circle A at two points. So I'm going to label those two points. In the directions it says to label them as C and D. And what we're going to do now is use your strategy to draw BD and or BC. As we have two tangent lines within this picture. So let's do those say in purple. So B to C, so that intersects our circle once. Or B to D, is that intersects our circle once. So in purple are the tangent lines. Draw one or the other. So B, C, and B, D are tangent lines. to circle A. I'm going to explain to you why that works. So if you have a highlighter, I want you to focus on circle M for a moment. So I'm going to take the highlighter and just go over circle M. This is where I want your attention. You can take another highlighter so let's use this blue. So if I look at segment AC, that's a radius. And I know that a radius, when drawn to the point of tangency of a tangent line, is a 90 degree angle. And I know for sure that this is a 90 degree angle because when I extend along, when I trace along the tangent line to the other part of the circle and use that diameter, this is, this angle right here, is an inscribed angle to this semicircle. So this proves that that angle is 90 and that that line is tangent to circle A. And that's the same at point D if you look at the other triangle that's drawn with radius AD. 